morning, my brothers and sisters. Giving all praises to God, honor to our pastor, Pastor Galen Wright. Thank you so much, sir, for giving me an opportunity to exercise the gift that God has called me to have. On today, there is a word coming out of Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Well, we'll be looking in verse 6. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Hebrew is right after James. Amen. Amen. I think. Amen. <laughs> before okay amen excuse me all right y'all know amen amen it's in between somewhere amen come table of contents amen 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 charge it to my head and not my heart praise god amen you have it amen again hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 the word of god says but without faith, it's impossible to please the Lord. My Bible says, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. I believe I'll read that again. The writer says, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to him must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And on today, I won't hold you long, but I want to talk to you from the subject a faith that pleases God. A faith that pleases God. A faith that pleases God. There are some times in our life where we try to do our very best to please others. And in some situations, we find ourselves disappointed exhausted, burdened down, whether it be financially, spiritually, and mentally. Yes, we try to please people who are not even important in our lives. And then those who we don't even care about, we still try to please. And there are some we care about and those that are important in our lives, we try to please as well. And like I said earlier, we find ourselves burdened down when it comes to pleasing others. We tend to go all out to impress many. For example, some buy fancy clothes just to get a compliment. Others try to put out a big wad of money to impress their boyfriends or their girlfriends to show that they got it like that. And if they hang around with them long enough, they will have or either be in a relationship with them. They say that if you just hang around with me, I can bless you and please you with the final things in life. Yes, they're willing to go all out to please somebody, but don't get it twisted, my brothers and sisters, because there are situations and there are some do's and don'ts we have to consider in order to please people. We have to please our wives as men of God, as husbands. We have to please our wives, and then wives have to please their husbands in order to keep the relationship and fellowship strong. We have to please our parents, little children, in order to do the things and receive the toys and go out on fun activities. We even have to please those that are over us, such as supervisors on our job, so we can earn a higher pay or receive a better position. 
And for those who own their own company or maybe own their own business, you have to please that customer so they can tell others about your business so you can stay in business. And what I'm trying to, to say is that we will do almost all that we can to help and please others. And again, in some of these areas, there's nothing wrong with it. But what I want you to think about on the question I'm about to ask next, do you go all out trying to please God? The next question, do you go all out to please God? And would you go all out to please God? And then I have another question to think about. Do you know what it takes to please God? And then the other question I want you to think about is, do you think God is pleased with what you're doing? I ask you again, would you go all out to please God? Do you go all out to please God? Do you know what it takes to please God? And do you think that God is pleased with what you have done for him? And these are the questions that reminds me in the Bible where it says, but let a man examine himself. And y'all, I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm my worst critic. And I believe that I fall short in some of these categories. And if not all of these categories in these in the scriptures, in the questions that I have asked. But when I examine myself, I have to realize that God has made this frame and God has made this body to serve him. And for those who don't know, how can an imperfect human please a perfect God? How can a sinner please a sovereign savior? Well, when you read Hebrews chapter 11, you will see that there are many imperfect men and women whose names are in this chapter. All because they knew how to please the Lord. They knew how to please God. And in order to please God, we have to read verse 6 for the answer in Hebrews chapter 11. The word of God says, but without faith, it's impossible to please God for who he is and for who comes to God must believe that he is God rather. And y'all, here is the blessing that God is a rewarder of those who what digital, digitally seek him. And y'all, what a mighty desire to have to please God. And if you have a desire to please God, then you must have faith. And y'all, there are three things we need to, to understand and think about in order to please God. First of all, the impossibility of pleasing God without faith. I say it again, the impossibilities of pleasing God without faith. Notice what the Bible says in verse 6. He says, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. You see, you cannot please God with your good works until you have faith in God. Because salvation, you know, is by faith. For the Bible says, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourself. For it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man shall boast. And so many Christians have failed pleasing God because they stopped trusting in God. And God right now is telling somebody today, yes, you trust me for your salvation, but you don't trust me with your money because you don't give your tithes. Yes, you trust me for salvation, but you don't trust me with your future because you're always trusting in the things that you have and the people you hang around. God is saying, yeah, you trust me too for salvation, but you don't trust me as far as trusting for your future because God is always telling us I put a roof over your head it's not your job it's not your security that you have God is telling somebody I'm the one that supplies your needs it's not your boyfriend it's not your husband it's not your wife I'm the one that's making these things possible for you. And in order for you to be strong in the Lord, God said, it's not the doctor that's strengthening you on today, but it's me that I have blessed you. I touched your head today. I woke you up this morning. It was me that got you out of the bed. It wasn't Dr. Lynn. It wasn't Dr. Johnson. It wasn't Dr. Smith. But it was I, the great I am, said, wake up, son. Wake up, daughter. It's time to serve me this morning. 
morning. And you know, some of us didn't say good morning to God, but aren't you glad God said good morning to you? Oh, y'all, y'all getting me happy now. I feel my help coming on now. So here it is. We should all be able to testify that God is the only one who is the keeper of our soul. And every now and then, God is not pleased in what we're doing because we're not trusting in him all the way. Oh, yeah, we're satisfied with salvation. But God said, why don't you take me a little bit farther than salvation? God said, yeah, you're satisfied with that, but why don't you get a little deeper in my word? I can take you farther than you want to go. See, our faith can be fickle when it comes to serving God. But don't you know our prayers also is answered through faith? According to James chapter 1, verse 6 through 8, which says, But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of sea driven and tossed by the winds. You can read the rest of it when you get home. But yes, we have to have faith in our prayer life. And can I tell you on this morning, religious activities does not always please God. I say that again. Religious activities does not always please God. I can stand here and preach a good sermon, but if I don't have faith in what God is saying, then it's not pleasing God. Just because it sounds good to you doesn't mean it sounds good to God. See, it, it, it doesn't please God if you sing a magnificent song, but your heart is not in the song. You can sing all day long. You can sound like a sweet hummingbird, but if you don't have faith in what you're singing in the choir, then it's not pleasing to God. I told you again, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So if you're going to sing, if you're going to preach, or even if you're going to pray, if, you, if you're going to pray a prayer, and if you don't have the direction and where you should go, then if it's not pleasing to God, then it's not pleasing to God. And that's what I'm not trying to say, but it, it doesn't please God if you're praying to God, praying to God on what you need, or praying to God on what needs to be changed or even praying to God on what direction you need to go but here it is you're thinking in your mind that God is really not able oh it's a scary thing when you're saying that God is unable to show up it's a scary thing when you're saying God is unable to guide me and able to grow me because when you start doubting in your heart then don't you know your prayers will not be answered it's a sin to doubt God it is a sin to doubt God because God is able to to do above and all that you can even think or even ask of. That's the kind of God that we need. And that's the kind of God we serve. Y'all, some may ask, well, what is faith? Well, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, he says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Now, that's a good definition of faith. But you know what? There's a better one in the Bible as well. When you read Romans chapter 4, verse 20 through 21, Abraham did not waver at the promise of God, though through unbelief. But he was strengthened in faith, giving God the glory. Y'all listen to this. And being fully convinced that what God has promised, he was also able to perform. Y'all, let me break that down in Holy Scripture, uh, in, in Holy Ghost terms. Faith is not wavering at the promise of God, but being fully convinced that what God says he will do, he will do. What God says he can do, then you can rest sure he can do it. The, besides of what you're thinking, besides of what we're thinking, God is an unlimited God. He's a God that never wavers in his faith. He's the type of God that is mighty and he is strong. Now, y'all don't get it twisted because faith is not a blind leap. Let me say that again. Faith is not a blind leap. See, some feel that life lived by faith is a life of fools. They speculate that faith is nothing more than a deep leap into darkness. But can I tell you, faith is more than just walking around blind, bumping into God's presence. You see, faith responds to God's promise. I say that again. Faith responds to God's promise. Y'all miss your shout. When God says, I will lead you, faith says, I will follow. When God says, I will feed you, faith says, I will eat. 
When God says, I will meet your needs, faith said it is done. <laughs> Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. You see, when God says something in his word, you can rest assured that you don't have to walk around blind. You can rest assured you don't have to bump into God's presence because you didn't know. When God says it, we ought to believe it and that ought to settle it. And if God says it, whether you believe it or not, it will come to pass. I'm here to tell you, you don't have to understand it, but if God said it, you know it's going to come. If God says it, you already know that it's going to go down. When God's against you, just know that God will make a way. When things begin to look stumbling in your life, just know that God's got your back. When others begin to forsake God, just know that you can hold on to God's unchanging hand. Just know that he's the God that can do the unthinkable and also the thinkable. When you think God is not around, just know that God is always around. Glory, hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Just because when I need him most, don't you know he's always on time? And if I knew that somebody that can glorify God like I can, you can testify the same, that the God that you serve, he can serve me and serve you at the same time. What a mighty God we serve. See, that's the kind of faith we need in order to, to please God. So we see the impossibilities of pleasing God with our faith. But next, y'all, let's look at the ingredients of the faith that pleases God. The Bible says, we must believe that God exists. It's in your word. In that same verse, he says, for he who comes to God, they must believe he is. That's what you call faith. That's the first thing you need to do. Just know that he is God and that he does exist. You'd be surprised. There are a lot of atheists in this world today. You see, it's one thing to pray. And it's another thing to believe that God hears our prayers. Uh, it's one thing to worship. But it's another thing to believe that it is accepted. In other words, whether you believe it or not, God is hearing our faintest cry when we put our faith in him. See, many people believe in praying and worshiping to a God with ears but cannot hear. They worship and pray to a God with eyes but they cannot see. They worship and pray to a God with a mouth but they cannot talk. They worship and pray to a God with legs but does not walk. And what the funny thing is, false worshipers build their God, they pay their God, they sacrifice to their God, their God is made by men. But don't you know our God made us, according to Colossians chapter 1 verse 16. Our God can see and our God can hear and our God shown us speaks to our heart and our God shown us moves from the, the uttermost to the guttermost. He moves inside our lives. And I'm here to tell somebody that the God we serve, he is the great Elohim. He is the great Almighty. He is the great El Shaddai. He's Jehovah Jireh. And we must believe that God rewards those who truly and diligently seek him. And how many know if you seek him for wisdom, he'll make you wise? How many know if you seek him for salvation, he will save you? How many know if you seek him for strength, he'll make you strong? Seek, seek him for guidance and he will direct your path. Seek him for faith and guess what? He'll make you faithful. Seek him even in your prayer life and he will answer your prayer. In order to please God, can I tell you when God says go, you have to go. In order to please God, when God says give, you have to give. When God says come into the house of the Lord, then you need to come into the house of the Lord. In order to please God, you have to do it starting with faith. And if you get in trouble by doing what God has told you to do, then go ahead and get your shot on now because it's going to be God that gets you out of your trouble. Because faith that pleases God is more than just a profession. 
I'll say that again. Faith that pleases God is more than just a profession or even a confession. Because the Bible says in James chapter 2 verse 14 in the illustration, he says, What does it profit, my brother, if someone says he that has faith but does not have works? Can faith say? He asked the question, see, your faith will always be tested. And you got to know when God says go, you have to go. Y'all, let me put it this way. I do good works because I am saved. I'm not doing good works in order to be saved. I'm putting my faith into works. I'm showing you that I'm saved. How do you know? Well, look, look what God has brought me from. Look what I'm trying to do in the name of Jesus. Yes, I know my righteousness is, is like filthy rags, but don't you know some things in my life God can bless still as well. He can bless the giving. He can bless our prayers. He can bless other things in our life. So don't you think just because now that you're saved by grace that you sit on your blessed assurance, but now go ahead and keep on serving the Lord. Lord. serve him with gladness serve him with joy in your heart because that's what faith does it makes us ought to give up and give God the praise but then it ought to make us want to give God the glory but then it also make us want to go out and work for the glory of God see your faith will be tested by God and it pleased the father when you trust in him and when your faith is tested and you pass that test, you will think to yourself, you know what, it really wasn't a test at all. God knew that you could do it. All you need to do is just get a little word of encouragement. That's just the way the Father works. He's just showing us that the reward is already there if you do my will. Because what we do for Christ will last. And if we're going to listen to the master, don't you know that makes us servants of the master? And if we're servants of the master, not only are we servants of God, but we are children of God. And just like little children, we ought to take our father's word and know that whatever he says, it is written. We can take it to the Lord in prayer and say, thank you, because I needed that word. Just like a little child hearing his parents telling them anything and everything. Don't you know a child is quick to believe what their parents saying? I remember when I was a child, my mama used to say this, and I know she was playing, but, but, but when we was little, mama said, yeah, I found you in a trash can. Nobody else wanted you, but God blessed my heart, and I went ahead and just took you in my arms and, made, and became your parent. Now, I know as I got older, I tripped out on that, but when I was a child, I really believed that, you know? <laughs> but through the grace of God, as I got older, I understood that better. She was just being funny. But you see how quick I was able to believe what my mama was saying? She used to get mad sometimes. Ooh, you know, she, I knew she wasn't telling the truth on it. Boy, I should have left y'all at the grocery store. <laughs> nah, mom, you know you really didn't want to leave us at the grocery store. But there are some things we are quick to believe. Because we are children of God. And that's the way we ought to believe, be with God. We ought to trust what the, what the Father is saying. If the father says do it, then we ought to do it. So pleasing God is a blessing because you're believing in God. Take him at his word because real faith changes lives. Yes, it will because don't you remember faith made Abel, Abel worship God. Faith made Enoch walk with God. But then faith made Noah work for God. I believe I say it again. Faith made Abel worship God. Faith may Enoch walk with God, but then faith may nor work for God. And that's the kind of faith that pleases God. Again, it is the impossibilities of pleasing God without faith. But then we see the ingredients of the faith that pleases God. But I want to leave you with one more and not take my seat. It is the invitation to faith that pleases God. I say that again. It is the invitation to faith that pleases God. Notice what that verse, same verse says. He says, he that cometh to God must believe. But watch this. We see the invitation in the middle of that verse. If you're going to come, you got to believe in God. God continuously invites us to have faith in Christ. Y'all, I'm reminded of what is said in John chapter 6, verse 37, which says, all that the Father gives me will come to me, and the ones who come to me, I will by no means cast out. You see, in order to please God, you have to trust in the Son of God.
and his name is Christ Jesus. And to come to Jesus is, uh, is, receive, is, is to receive him. He's the one you come to. And can I tell you on this morning, you don't have to come with your ceremony speech. You don't have to come with your money giving, trying to give it to God. You don't have to come with your good works, but you need to come by faith. Knowing that you are a sinner who needs salvation. Knowing that you are a sinner that needs a savior. Knowing that you cannot save yourself. Come by faith by trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior. And he will no wise cast you out. See, you don't, have to, you don't have to know every book of the Bible. You don't have to know all the words in the Bible. But just know that if you come by faith, God will make it all right through yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. See, our Savior, don't you know, he even pleased the Father. Because God sent Christ to a sinful world to die for sinners in the world. And it pleased the Father to hear his Father, excuse me, it pleased the Father to hear his Son says, not my will, Father, but your will be done. So if you deny self and, and glorify God, don't you know it pleases the Father? See, all you have to do is do it God's way. And I'm here to tell you that God's way is the best way to go because he will not mislead you. He will not put you on a crash course that will lead to your destruction. And have I got a witness that the God that we serve will see you through. If Abel was here today, he would tell you that I trusted in God. And I brought an innocent lamb for a sacrifice. And if Enoch was here, he would tell you that I walked with God. I talked with God. I told him all about my troubles. And that day he took me on on to glory land. If Noah was here today, he would tell you that I trusted in God. When he told me that it was going to rain, he told me to build an ark for one day it's going to rain. So go ahead and get your family inside the ark because I'm fixed to destroy the world. And if Sarah was here, she would tell you that the God that we serve in my age of 90 years old has blessed me with a child by the name of Isaac. He did what I thought he could not do. But yet still, I took him at his word. I trusted in the promises of his word. And if Abraham was here today, he would tell us to put God first because I stood on his promises. I heard God say, take Isaac on a mountain high and prepare an altar. And as soon as I laid all Isaac on the altar, as soon as I began to lift my arm up to stab Mr. Isaac, but I heard the Lord say Abraham Abraham don't you see that ram in the bush oh and what about Jesus what would he tell us today he would tell us to continue on trusting in God because he is my father and the father sent me to die on the cross for your soul I died oh didn't I die late Friday evening but early one Sunday morning I got up trusting in the father and therefore since I trust in the father you can also trust in the father I know storms may come and the breakers may dash but hold on to God's unchanging hand won't he make a way out of no way that's the kind of faith God needs that's the kind of faith God is looking for God is looking for a few faithful members that is willing to stand out on God's holy word. Have I got a witness? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. A faith that pleases God. 